For the next uh, couple of minutes or so, um, I want Stephen and myself to be sharing about um, his country and my country so that we do our part as um, the citizens of the world to let the people know where we're coming from and then where we're from. And then when this whole thing is over in 2021, I hope that everyone spend their tourism dollar in Singapore and just to help that micro um, enterprise. And uh, the person who's struggling in the street, the person who lose their job, um, people who've got their income, you know, decimated, their careers dashed, you know. So um, I just want to tell a little bit about uh, Stephen's friends and families and the church congregation who's listening out there. Singapore is about seven degrees from uh, the equator, about seven hours uh, seven to ten hours to Australia, depending on which part of Australia you're going. Um, uh, so this part of the world is really, um, I mean, we are really just an island, but I should say that Singapore is, is like, it, um, you, if you come here, you will feel that you're in America because everyone speaks English and that's the, our official language. Um, everyone speaks uh, English and a large part of our population, which is between uh, local born and bred Singaporeans. Uh, we, we, we are an immigrant country coming from all over the world uh, since nation building, since uh, before the Second World War. Um, and a uh, large part of us uh, built the country. My, my parents, my grandparents built the country. Um, and um, there's about a population, about 4 million and another 2 million uh, Americans, Europeans, expatriates who are like passing through this place uh, you know, putting up their uh, American headquarters in this part of Asia in Singapore. So you've got the world's biggest uh, venture capitalist here and the world's the American banks here, um, um, Citibank. Um, and then you've got all the biggest uh, American brand names like Pfizer, um, GSK, Exxon, Nobel, all here <laughs> at the doorstep. <laughs> so your government is pumping a lot of money into Singapore. But... Um, Singapore is one of the largest trading partners of uh, America too, uh, in terms of GDP and uh, the makeup of, of our GDP. Um, we are one of the biggest importers of American goods. So we are a good friend of yeah. the Americans. <laughs> and um, uh, in terms of uh, makeup of population, um, a big part of us are Christians. Uh, not more than 50% because we've got, a, we've got the diversity of faith. But there is a there is a respect and, and love for each other, uh, regardless of what uh, major mainstream uh, faith you're from. Either either you're from Hindu, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Taoism, uh, Christianity, or um, Catholic. Uh, people do respect each other, and there's love. So um, I, I I I like the beautiful part um, that we can stay and respect and love one another and still talk about our faith and have sharing over coffee or table and give each other a pat on the back and say, hey, um, uh, uh, let's encourage one another. So we are able to have that. I really hope that um, uh, Stephen and, and your congregation and your friends could come over to this part of the world, especially Singapore, of course, to really see this country, um, this little beautiful island that I've sent you some pictures, um, which I'm going to put up on it looks gorgeous, by the way. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks. Um, that's a, that one of the building that I'm going to put up here um, is by your. Um, it's by, I think the MGM of Las Vegas. They actually invested six billion US dollars in, in building up the la the world's largest integrated um, casino resort um, in Singapore. That's why I'm just telling you that when you come here, you feel like home. Just that this is a much more. Uh, it's like a modern city state. Um, and mm -hmm. you've got, of course, you've got an amalgamation of different uh, Asians here, the Indians, uh, the Vietnamese, the Hong Kong, the Japanese, the Koreans. They're all here, but it is like a big happy family that I would like to promote this uniqueness of Singapore um, to the world. Um, and, and also when you come here, you feel so safe because the girls can go out 
um, children can go out and meet their friends at night and you feel safe, the, the crime rate is really low. Um, you can take a cab and you can come home safely, you can go to the beach at night, it can still feel safe here, um, even in the public transport. And um, uh, not only that, um, uh, we've got a very capitalistic city here. Um, tax rate is really low at about 20% uh, for the companies. And, uh, and a lot of companies pay minimum tax because, um, I mean, we believe in uh, promoting entrepreneurship and businesses um, mm -hmm. and not getting handouts from the government. I, I think we, a lot of us are similar in, in, in this sense, um, American concept and, and the Singapore concept. Um, not not trying to get um, handouts, but you know people are diligent, honest, an, an honest group of people. Uh, people, I just think that people are just have such a simple life, uh, uh, the worldview of life here. Uncomplicated, I should say, uncomplicated, not simple, but uncomplicated. And um, uh, tax rates are really low for companies, and companies are able to deter, defer their taxes. And we don't have a international tax on individual income. So like, unlike the Americans, whereby they are being taxed wherever they are, non-domicile, they call it. But here in Singapore, you just pay your taxes if you're working and you get, receive your income from Singapore. So how beautiful is that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, sounds like you, you guys are more, uh, more American than America is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we believe, in, um, we believe in jobs. We believe in the economy. We believe in um, making our lives determining our lives and not asking for help uh, and, and that's how Singaporeans uh, live their lives and, and a lot of that's why this topic for us is so important uh, Stephen because a lot of people are going through very tough times not reaching out they think they want to handle it on their own you yeah, know right. and, um, that, and uh, because it is such a culture of uh, people going through the grind going through this hardship on their own not trying to reach out and not trying to commiserate, like tell their friends their, their problems and all. It makes it harder for um, the mind. You know, a lot of people are breaking down. There, there are a lot of people are breaking down. And, and, um, and the thing is that the scary thing is that whatever thing goes on in your mind, people can't see. You know, it, it's yeah. different from cutting your throat or <laughs> cutting your hand, you know, where you can see from the external. But, you know, um, whatever thing that goes on in your mind, um, the rest of the people, the rest of the world can't see, and, and you just go on in your mind, and you go on in your world until you break down, and, and that's a scary part, and let, let us have this very open conversation uh, about faith today, um, Stephen. Um, tell us a little bit about your church, tell us a little bit about yourself, and, and a bit about your country, and then let's dive into this topic about soul discovery, um, uh, and faith discovery in pandemic. Why is it why do you think we can make use of this time of being quiet when the wall is really shutting down. and then uh, the floor is yours? Okay, well, I have, yeah, um, my name's uh, Stephen Mannion. I pastor two small United Methodist churches in, in the Buffalo, New York area. Buffalo, New York is only about an hour from Toronto. Um, we're right on the, on the border of Canada, right by Ni Niagara Falls, which I think every listener has heard of. <laughs> and um, I live about 20 minutes from Niagara Falls. And um, my church is, you know, um, they're, uh, you know, um, good, good people. Um, and uh, just trying to do the best we can in, in this culture. Uh, uh, the United States is, um, is going through a, a real flux right now. And, um, it's, I'll tell you this, it's not as bad as the news is probably making us look. Um, I've heard people saying, um, I, I do want to say this, that they're making it sound like American, like the American police are hunting down black people and trying to kill them. And that's just not true. Um, that stuff happens very rarely. Uh, but there's a real effort to cause division right now in our country. Um, you know, have two teams and fighting against each other, basically. And so if I'd like to ask everybody who's not from the United States to pray for the United States, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind, it needs prayer. And, um, and that's just the normal. And the pandemic is just making it all worse, isn't it? <laughs> it's just making everybody a little bit more on edge and a little bit more uh, nervous. And like you said, Vicki, many people are losing their jobs. Many people have, some people have lost loved ones. 
Um, they don't know if they're going to lose their job. Um, I pastor, like I said, you know, I pastor two churches and, and um, there's concern in churches about will enough, you know, will the church be able to stay open because there's less, you know, we can't have worship as often and there's less people coming when we do. And right now in Western New York, we're probably going to be going back down to lockdown again, starting Wednesday. Um, so uh, there's this constant, you know, I know people have lost their businesses. I know people who are on the brink of losing their business and one more lockdown is maybe all it takes the final nail in the coffin for their business, a business that many of them have worked their entire lives to build. And it was their pride and joy. And uh, yeah. I think that's happened all over the world. Hasn't it? Has it happened in Singapore, Vicky? Um, and, and sad to say, um, Stephen, there are people who jump down the buildings, right? So I think that suffice. <laughs> I mean, the people who are uh, mentally, I mean, I, I, I was, um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time uh, watching the sermons online because I can't go to church and I, I, I watch a lot of uh, Billy Graham. Unlike people who are dead, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they can do no well, sin. Well, he's very good. <laughs> because they can do no sin and they are with the Lord, you know? Um, I like people who have gone uh, home to the Lord. So I, I watch a lot of, uh, for the past three years, I watch a lot of uh, Billy Graham and I play them a lot, like 20 times is like, 24-7, you know, about, about life in perspective. And, and the thing is that my conversation with, with you the other time was that what stuck up was um, God is only concerned or the highest concern for God is our soul, our salvation. Mm, right. um, and, and because my mom has gone home to the Lord and I understand firsthand that the body we're in is actually temporal. And the life that we're going through is that, is that just like, like bubbles, you know? And uh, what everything we are trying to get is just vanity, which is all in the Bible. Of them was, you know, it says in Luke chapter 5, um, verse 16, that Jesus went away to, uh, to the wilderness to pray. And then it says, as was his habit. And we find another verse that says Jesus went away early in the morning. Um, so... It, all indications of scriptures, Jesus went yeah. away to pray early in the morning yeah. and in the evening. And sometimes we know he prayed all night. And if, and, um, and yeah. so, uh, this getting away with our, with our Lord is, is just, uh, is just vital for helping us to get through this whole situation. And, yeah. um, it, it's probably the most, you know, important thing that we can do. Um, and, uh, we all know uh, Psalm 23. I have this little card here. It has the Jesus with the uh, sheep and, you know, he's our shepherd. And uh, for those are, who are his children, you know, um, he says that my sheep know my voice. And, and we all know Psalm 23, you know, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall, I don't, I, I shall not want, I have, I, I, I have no need of anything. Is basically what he's saying there. He makes me lie down in green pastures. There's abundance all around me. He, Leave me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And, and it goes down to, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, of death even if I walk through hard times and darkness, yeah. um, what does it say? He says, you are still with me. Yeah. And then he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The, the yeah. rod was to keep you kind of going the right direction. And the staff was, was, was protection. And so he protects you and guides you even along um, dark times like, like we are in now or times where we have uncertainty and are worried. And um, so we don't, we don't need to fear. Uh, we can rest in him knowing that our shepherd is the, is, uh, the all-powerful um, creator of the universe. And he's not you know, caught off guard by COVID-19 like we talked about last time. Um, he knew it was coming. He knew it was coming whenever he created the earth. And um, he knows what his children need. And um, he knows how to take care of us. He knows how to protect our souls. And um, we just, um, you know, need to draw closer to him, like you said. Just uh, draw closer to him. Uh, spend time in the word of God. And, and I think this whole pandemic is a unique time. You know, we live in a, a very rushed world, don't we? Technology, 
everything's busy, busy, busy. Social media, you know, we have entertainment in our palm of our hands. Every, you know, our phones are basically like supercomputers, you know. And, um, you know, I, I remember when I was a kid and we had like this old Texas instrument. It was like this computer. And we thought it was the coolest thing in the world. That thing can't do anything near what my phone can do now, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy for, for um, time with the Lord and time just in silence and solitude to be squelched out because we're so busy. And so, um, like we said last time, I'm not, I'm not willing to say that God caused the pandemic for this, but, I, but he uses it. And I think he's using the pandemic to get, to, um, get his children, his sheep's attention and to say, my, my child. Come to the quiet pasture. Come beside the still water. Be at peace. I am in control. You don't need to worry. Just calm down. You know, and uh, we don't need to fear. And we don't need to, um, and just like you mentioned, Vicki, um, you know, what happens in this earth, the Bible says is a vapor. And he says in Romans that uh, I am... I consider that the, the, that the trials of this present time are not even worthy of being compared with the glory that will be revealed in us in Christ Jesus. So um, all this stuff going on is a shadow. It's, it's dark, it's, it's, you know, but we have a light that we're looking towards. And uh, that light at some point is going to, whenever Christ returns, is going um, is going to conquer all and restore um, and there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And so that's, that's what we need to keep our eyes fixed upon, not keep our eyes fixed upon the fear and the pandemic, although they're realities, but keep our eyes fixed upon the author and finisher of our faith. Yeah. And, um, you know, is, is there, I just want to ask a couple of questions, um, uh, Stephen. Is, is there yeah. any uh, stories that you've come across that people have revived, uh, uh, renewed their faith? during this time in your congregation? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Could you share? There's been many people who have said that. And uh, yeah, Could you share a couple uh, of real cases? Yeah. Um, there's, um, there's a, I'm trying to think of, of exact, exact cases. Um, I've heard, I've heard stories. I was trying, trying to think of now. I've heard like a bunch, one of those things where you've heard a bunch of cases and, and, um, um, I, don't know, I honestly, can't, right the second, can't think of an exact case. Um, I've heard, I've, but there's been many people who have just mentioned that their their faith has grown during this during this time mm -hmm. um, because of what you're saying. Because they're they're able to spend more time and um, and it's kind of like a wake up call in a way. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I can't think of an exact story right right this mm -hmm. moment. Um, may, if I think of one in a minute, I'll. Um, yeah. I mean, in my own life, mm -hmm. I mean, I, it, it has. You know, and, and, um, you, and you know what? What I'm concerned about, uh, Stephen, is that, you know, God has kind of like tried to knock a sense out of us. Like we are going through this, like what you say, this accelerated speed towards independence from God because we've got AI, we've got artificial intelligence, we've got the Google. You know that you know we are like the that like Google is like the all-seeing eye on us you now. <laughs> right. You know, it's like. It's like it, it can track us wherever we are. It's like, what is this? He knows exactly where we are. He knows exactly where we took that picture, where I've gone. And I didn't even know I was there. It's like, <laughs> I have forgotten about that. You know, we are accelerating towards this fourth industrialization where um, we are, I mean, I should say mankind as a general, all right, in general speaking, uh, they are. They feel that they can control, invent, reinvent their lives, and determine the future already mm -hmm. with so much power uh, in their hands. You know, with with this advent of um, technology, and of course, thanks to technology, I'm able to speak to you. But it has gone off tangent, I think, uh, with. Um, and I'm not saying that there's not done any comfort in our lives. I, I think it's gone, uh, made our lives comfortable. I, I, can't, I can't say that, I can't deny that. 
But I think there is another um, dimension to it, and it's a complicated issue, right? So there's another dimension to this argument that, you know, we are speeding so much ahead. Morality and law couldn't keep up. Humanity couldn't keep up with the changes of technology. You know, um, yeah, let's not even talk about religion. Let's just talk about morality, right? I mean, stem cell, uh, etc. cetera. Um, uh, it's, it's moving so far ahead that um, people feel that they can determine. And I, I think it's like a wake up call to humanity that hits Amen. us between our eyes to say that, hey, you know, um, like you can plan, like what we were say, saying last, last, last session, you can plan whatever you want. Because you know, I'd like to welcome uh, again to talk about life.